Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be answering the question, what is a kernel? A kernel is a program that exists on your computer through the operating system. If we thought of a little box here that represents the kernel, let me draw it out real quick. And now this is the kernel layer. This here is used by the operating system to access and interact with resources such as hardware. So if we drew a second layer here below, we could think of this as the hardware layer. So I'm just gonna label that HW. And in this layer, we have things like the CPU, the central processing unit, memory, storage, and perhaps the GPU, which is a graphics processing unit. Of course, there are more pieces of hardware, but that's all we're going into right now. And talking to hardware is a very complex thing that needs to be handled by a program of its own. And that's what the kernel does. So we can imagine these talk back and forth between the layers. So again, why is it needed? It's really needed because there's another layer up here, which most people interact with called, let's draw out one more layer. And this is called the user space. And in the user space, this is what the user sees and interacts with. And then this layer, of course, talks back and forth with the kernel as well, which now we kind of see what the kernel's doing. It's a translation layer that translates between the user space down to the hardware level. Every operating system has its own kernel at the heart of it. And since we talk a lot about Linux on this channel, that's exactly what Linux is. A kernel is not an operating system. Instead, it's this program layer that we've been talking about right in between the user space and hardware. Many people get that confused. When talking about Linux, they're actually talking about the kernel. But when we talk about Linux distributions, we're talking about packages that have been put together. For example, a graphical user interface or desktop environment, along with many different programs and the kernel, different types of init systems. Those all go into making an operating system. And then of course, with those Linux distributions, they use uh, the layer of the kernel or co what's called Linux to talk between the user space and hardware since it's already developed and very mature. So let's step aside and check out what the kernel actually manages. We spoke a little bit about the different layers, but let's talk specifically about the kernel layer. So if we write out manage, let's talk about some things that it does manage. One thing that we already discussed is the CPU and its tasks that it's currently running. It helps translate and give instructions to the CPU in a format that it understands so it can process your information properly. Also, the kernel manages reading and writing out input and output devices. Another thing is scheduling to make sure your system doesn't get bogged down and that it's properly taking care of tasks. It also takes care of memory allocation and deallocation, cleaning up your memory as things open and close, requesting those resources, as well as giving them back. Then another thing it does is it has some security built in. That way, programs don't cross together and are properly managed because you wouldn't want to reach a space of another program because that could create a security risk. Finally, there's of course more things that the kernel does. This is a really small list compared to everything that it does. A kernel is a very large piece of software back to the reading and writing of the IO devices. You can imagine there's plenty of devices on your computer, such as a storage disk, CD-ROMs, USBs, all that fun stuff, which require drivers to talk back and forth, user space and hardware, which of course exists in the kernel as drivers and modules. So now that we talked about what is a kernel and what it does, let's talk about which kernels exist. So I'm gonna create another category called types. The first one is a monolithic kernel. Basically with this one, the ideology here is if something gets hung up, it crashes the entire system, all due to the expense of speed. So if you want more speed, you would use a monolithic kernel, but of course you have to make sure that all your ducks are in a row or you can have a fatal system crash. Again, this can make it faster than other kernels, but at the cost of having to be more stringent, making it harder to manage. You also have a micro kernel here, which takes on the opposite of a monolithic. Then we have an exo kernel. This one isn't used as much, so we won't talk about it really. Same as the rest of these, we have a nano kernel, 
and here probably the most popular one is called a hybrid kernel which is really just a mix between the monolithic and micro kernel. Most operating systems use a hybrid kernel type and there is some debate in the kernel community whether or not hybrid kernel is even a thing or if it's just really a monolithic kernel that's handled properly. We'll let others debate that. And now that we understand the different types of kernels, let's talk about the Linux kernel specifically. So the Linux kernel can be considered a monolithic kernel. It could also be probably considered a hybrid kernel, but again, the debate's out on that for the terminology between monolithic and hybrid. So I do believe that the Linux kernel calls itself a monolithic kernel. So then if you ask yourself, Linux distributions and operating systems have to have a kernel, which is called Linux. So what does Windows have? I'll give you a moment to take a guess. If you said it's called the NT kernel, you are correct. And the NT kernel was designed again to do the same thing as the Linux kernel, which if we go back to here, talk between the user space and hardware. Now that you know the one for Windows, what is the one for the Apple operating systems, such as their watch, TV, iPad, and computer operating systems? They all use the XNU kernel, which it acquired and stands for X is not Unix. And now we know some of the most popular operating systems and what kernels they run. And we can also understand that the kernel is now pretty much an engine that runs the operating system. Well, hopefully you learned something about kernels today. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.